All right, thank you very much, Tim, and um, welcome everybody. Um, usual disclaimer, but we can move on to the next slide. So yeah, thank you for the chance to introduce the Hazer process and talk about hydrogen today. Um, I appreciate that hydrogen is very topical. Um, and so as well as explaining what our technology does, I will take a moment to you know, briefly dwell on why hydrogen. So Hazer um, is the owner and developer of the Hazer process. And it's a way of turning methane, whether that's from biogas from a landfill or wastewater treatment plant, or methane and ethane from natural gas into hydrogen and graphite to 21st century products, which are seeing an enormous uh, increase in interest. And we, we expect to have multi-decade demand growth uh, for clean energy, uh, for clean transport, for batteries, for lubricants and advanced materials. Um, we believe that our technology is a clean and cost-effective way of producing hydrogen, a key uh, component of the uh, global push uh, for low emissions, high intensity energy. Um, and we believe that there's a really strong premium market emerging for which our technology is an exceptionally good fit. And our technology is maturing at exactly the right time uh, to take part in this global surge in hydrogen demand, which is anticipated over the next three, five, 10 and 30 years. Uh, if we move on, please. So very quickly, you know, why hydrogen? Um, there's been an enormous number of announcements in the last uh, week in Australia with the announcement of a technology roadmap by Minister Taylor, you know, emphasising hydrogen as one of the priority technologies. Uh, the European Union has highlighted hydrogen as a key part of their green stimulus package, uh, where they expect to uh, invest over $10 um, billion in the next couple of years to help stimulate uh, its growth. And in fact, um, in research released by Bank of America uh, Securities, the old Merrill Lynch for us uh, slightly older people, they estimated that the hydrogen economy had the potential to be $2.5 trillion revenue economy by 2050 and would need $11 trillion of infrastructure investment between now and 2050. And that's because hydrogen is the key to actually decarbonising hard to decarbonise sectors, transport, heavy industry, and it's a way of using storing, transporting, and then reusing renewable energy in an incredibly efficient way. So hydrogen can act to take renewable energy from places like Australia to places like Japan, which has low renewables through the export of liquid hydrogen. It can actually be a way of um, embedding more renewables in the grid by using renewable energy to make hydrogen when there's excess energy and then turning the hydrogen back into energy when there's a deficit. So it's the answer of how do we make um, the grid more flexible and responsive to take advantage of the incredibly low prices we're seeing for wind and solar. But then hydrogen as a molecule, as a product, can in itself decarbonise transport, replacing diesel fuel in uh, trains, in ferries, in heavy road transport, in buses, in waste collection vehicles, and then even long range um, personal utility vehicles. Um, it can decarbonise in industry and industrial energy by being used in turbines, in um, furnaces, but also as a feedstock for ammonia, for explosives, for petrochemicals, and for sort of other sort of synthetic chemicals. So hydrogen is poised to be you know, a key uh, vector for, for storing and delivering energy, a key mode for generating clean energy, a clean fuel for transport, and the building block of clean heavy industry as we progress through 2020s to 2030s and 2040s. Next slide, please. So what is it we do and why do we fit into that in a really important way? So we take methane as a feedstock. Methane is one of the key components of natural gas, um, but it can also be produced as a renewable gas by gas from organic sources. And that's typically through breaking down the organic solid waste that is left behind in wastewater treatment plants or in landfills. We take this methane, which by weight is 25% hydrogen and 75% carbon, and using iron ore as a low cost sacrificial process catalyst, we react the methane to, uh, in a pyrolysis reactor, in a fluidized bed reactor, to split apart the hydrogen and carbon molecules um, within the methane and produce hydrogen gas and graphite as a solid. So we produce two products with no waste through this process. Why this is so um, uh, important and why this uh, has a unique position in the market is that the traditional way of making hydrogen is to take methane, mix it with steam and produce hydrogen and CO2. So we have a very high emission um, benefit compared to the traditional method of manufacturing hydrogen. And we also use a saleable byproduct in graphite, an advanced material which is becoming more and more in demand in the 21st century. Uh, move on, please. 
So our company and our technology is founded on a really sort of rigorous and structured uh, technical development program. Um, I won't step through it all, but just to summarize, the technology started at the University of Western Australia with primary research um, into the kinetics and catalysts and um, the performance of the, you know, the chemistry of the reaction. Um, after the technology was spun out from UWA, established, we established a research um, alliance with the University of Sydney and have been collaborating with them ever since, and they continue to support our R&D program. Through 2018 through to 2020, we underwent um, a process of rigorous pilot plant testing, uh, first in New South Wales, and then co-located um, with our graphite collaboration partner, Mineral Resources in Quinana, and we've run two pilot plant reactors. And then through 2019, uh, up until uh, mid this year, when we took financial close and final investment decision on our first large scale project, we've been collaborating with the Water Corporation, um, the government owned utility in WA responsible for providing drinking water and sewerage services. And we're gonna build the first larger scale, continuously operating fully integrated version of the Hazer process, um, the first larger scale green hydrogen production plant um, in Australia. Um, based at the Water Corporation site at Woodman Point. Um, next slide, please. So this is a very um, exciting point in our development uh, with the commitment to build the first larger scale, uh, fully uh, functioning example of our technology, which will be a model for future commercial plants with potential partners uh, in Australia, Japan, Korea, Europe, the USA. So this project is 100 tonne per annum fuel cell grade hydrogen production facility and will produce approximately 375 tonnes of 90% uh, pure graphite alongside it. To put that in context, that 100 tonne per annum fuel cell grade hydrogen is enough to supply around about a 10 bus fleet. So enough to get um, early projects in the transport sector up and running. Um, we're processing biogas, so that's uh, gas that's produced through breaking down sewage waste as a way of minimising waste that has to go to landfill. Um, and that biogas is currently mostly being flared on site at the Water Corporation. So for our client and partner at the Water Corporation, um, we represent a way of reducing their emissions while offering them a long-term high value usage um, of their waste and also finding a way to long-term reduce the amount of organic waste they, they create. Um, so reducing their cost of operations and their impact on the environment. For us, you know, we get a great source of feedstock, which is ideally suited to our process. Um, we get to um, show a very green, you know, we will have a hydrogen, uh, sorry, a carbon abatement credit of around about 100 tonnes of CO2 for each tonne of hydrogen from this site. And we get to produce green hydrogen in an area where we think will be well situated for future transport demand. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this project, which will be a $17 million project, is fully funded. Uh, we fully funded it through a combination of government grants. We've been well supported by ARENA, the Australian Renewable Energy Agency. Um, we raised $8.4 million of equity um, in July this year at 42 cents, oh, I'm sorry, June 20 this year at 42 cents. Um, and we've had an additional 1 million of equity through subscription for existing options. Um, to complete the funding package, we secured a $6 million senior secured loan. Now that's financed by our future R&D tax rebate uh, incentive cash flows. And together that leaves us funded to not only uh, build the project, operate it for the first year, but continue with our international business development and our extensive R&D program. Next slide, please. So here's our key schedule. Um, and this is uh, yeah, really important because this will uh, demonstrate us scaling the technology up and deliver it around about 12 months from now, ready to be a reference site for full scale commercial applications. Um, as I mentioned, we took the FID in July this year. Um, we've awarded an EPC contract to Primero Group out of Western Australia. Uh, we're currently completing the detailed design and award of contract packages. Um, we're progressing well with environment, heritage and planning approvals. And we expect to be ready for civil works and site preparation in December this year. And we'll have reached practical completion and commence operations from mid next year. So mid 2021, a really key date for us and the company. Next slide, please. So just to round off in the last minute, minute and a half, I'll quickly sort of you know, touch on a couple of points of how we're going to build on the CDP. So our commercial development strategy um, is coming together, I think, in a very logical way, just as the world is starting to focus on, okay, how do we really start to accelerate this hydrogen economy opportunity? So step one and the, our, our first priority is demonstrating that our technology can scale up through successfully implementing our commercial demonstration plant, as I've just run through. 
Alongside of that, we have a number of engagements with you know, excellent potential partners uh, internationally and in Australia, looking at opportunities to replicate what we've done at Woodman Point, but at larger scale, um, or to embed our technology in heavy industry parts, or to embed our technology with utilities. I mean, we're talking to uh, people in Europe, Singapore, Korea, Japan, and the US, who've all reached out for our technology. And underneath that, the third stream is that we're working hard through our R&D program and still in discussions with our um, collaboration partner, Mineral Resources, about how we build evaluating graphite business uh, based on our deep understanding of the graphite product uh, produced through the Hazer process. Next slide, please. So a couple of um, you know, key points that I guess you know, I think you know, show that that strategy is actually engaging with the market the right way and is staying a bit fruit. Um, in January this year, we announced a, uh, an MOU for a strategic alliance with Chiyoda Corporation of Japan. Um, Chiyoda is a, one of the world's leading EPC and uh, O&M, one of the leading world leading engineering companies. Uh, they're a key leader in the Japanese hydrogen market, and we're working very closely with them uh, to uh, for them to lead uh, on our behalf engagement with potential customers, cities and prefectures in Japan with a model where we will provide the technology and they'll provide the on the ground project building and operating services. So we think it's a really good mix and that's starting to show some real fruit. Um, and we hope to translate that into feasibility studies you know, in the upcoming year. Next slide, please. Um, in Australia, um, the hydrogen market is starting to grow and we're seeing an enormous interest from potential customers and end users as everybody um, who has a serious carbon um, emission is starting to work out how they will seriously start to reduce that over the next 5, 10 and 20 years. Uh, we're collaborating with Macquarie Capital and Hyzon Motors, a provider of hydrogen vehicles, to undertake a feasibility study into establishing the first um, renewable hydrogen refuelling facility in Western Australia. And we're looking at the Mandurah and Peel region, so an area about 50 kilometres south of Perth, as an ideal location where we could act as a supply source from our project um, it's a key transport po uh, point with both agricultural and mining related transport. And there's a lot of interest in that area for potentially being the first home for heavy uh, vehicles running off hydrogen fuel cells in Australia. Uh, next one, please. Uh, so just briefly to finish, uh, as well as uh, the hydrogen, which is our key focus, and um, as shown by the Bank of America report, actually has enormous potential, potential measured in the trillions of dollars. Um, but we, we do see you know, significant value in the graphite that's being produced. Um, it's a unique carbon material. Um, it will require you know, intensive R&D, which we're well set up and well funded uh, to, to carry out, to really understand its chemical and physical performance. But we're seeing interest from potential um, users in the lubricants, activated carbon, battery materials, carbon black um, markets. And we're looking to work with um, a number of them to create specific products for their applications. Uh, next slide, please. Um, and just this is sort of one point that often gets overlooked, but would just flag. I'm you know, very pleased with the way that we've built such a strong R&D platform um, over the last two to three years. Um, the company was founded in R&D. The technology came out of the university sector. Um, we're now part of one of the Australian CRCs, Cooperative Research Centres, the Innovative Manufacturing CRC. So this is a platform between governments, uh, academia and industry to, to really uh, take advantage of Australian technology. Um, it's a great platform for us to um, collaborate with other companies who are interested in advanced materials. Um, it's a mechanism for the government of co-funding the commercialisation of research. And so we've been invited into an initial two-year partnership with the CRC, uh, which will reduce our cost of R&D. And we're really excited about what that might produce. Uh, next slide, please. And just lastly, um, to, to close off on, we do have a, a collaboration agreement with Mineral Resources on, on our graphite. Um, we successfully completed stage one of that pilot plant uh, during 2019. Um, this has entered somewhat of a, a slowdown mode as Mineral Resources really focused on uh, delivering their iron ore business during the COVID disruption in early 2020. Um, but we hope to you know, kickstart and continue discussions with them about progressing that to a larger scale synthetic graphite plant and we'll update shareholders as we get more clarity from our partner on that. So Tim, I might like just to finish there and open it to questions. Um, hydrogen is you know, an incredibly exciting sector at the moment. Um, there are literally billions of dollars being galvanized um, to uh, see hydrogen you know, accelerate the way wind and solar has over the last 10 or 15 years. 
Um, and we fully anticipate uh, this industry to be you know, significantly more mature in the next two to three years as our technology um, hits an equivalent point of maturity. Thanks, Jeff. Um, we've got lots of questions, actually. Um, it's a real area of interest these days, obviously. Um, can you talk to the patent um, and whether you have any patents approved around your process? Lots of questions on that. Absolutely. Yeah, so the technology um, is unique um, and it's in an area which has been studied extensively. There's you know, many dozens or hundreds of you know, global research programs looking at different variants. Um, we are pursuing patents in 24 countries um, in what's uh, in four patent families. Um, in the key patent family, the one which gives us a patent for the production of hydrogen from hydrocarbons using iron ore as a catalyst, um, we've been granted full patents in Australia, um, also in Singapore, New Zealand, um, Eurasia, or with Central Asia, Eurasia, so Russia and the stands. Um, and we have received our first uh, patent acknowledgement in the US. So we're pursuing um, a patent strategy across uh, three areas of, of our technology, patenting it in three different ways. Um, they've proceeded from applications into full patents and in the remaining jurisdictions, they're following those lead application jurisdictions. And so far we haven't had any of them stopped, knocked back or disputed. Right, and um, where do you believe your kind of uh, battery grade graphite sits on the kind of cost curve? Um, that's one of the areas that we're looking at very, very closely with our R&D. So it's not one that I can give a clear cut answer to immediately. Um, the battery graphite materials market is you know, one of the most technically complex and least transparent uh, markets of around. It's very much a, um, a deeply technical chemicals type product. It's not a commodity or bulk type product, as I think you know, some of our Australian peers in the graphite market have found out. And in fact, the, the value of battery grade graphite can vary enormously. Um, so there's very, very specific products. Um, we've successfully tested uh, refined samples of our graphite to show that it can make effective yeah, half cell and pouch batteries. Um, and we're still you know, working with intermediaries, so uh, traders and R&D houses, and we're also working with potential battery manufacturers to really understand how they would design a battery using the unique characteristics of our graphite as it's purified. Um, and so that's going to be a real focus in the next 12 months as we get to the point of having some larger scale samples available from the CDP. Right, um, and just time for one more question. In regards to your pilot plan, is, is that fully funded with grants and things like that? Absolutely. So the commercial demonstration plant, you know, we actually think it's you know, gone beyond pilot stage, um, is fully funded. You know, we have a $17 million capital budget. Uh, we've got a $9.4 million grant from ARENA. Um, we have a senior secured loan of $6 million and a cash balance uh, as of today of around about $16.5 million. Um, so we're fully funded through construction and the first year of operations of that plan.